Hi, I'm Mark Singer from XL4. It's January of 2018, and we are at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are inviting you in to the XL4 Exhibition and Demonstration Suites to take a look at our Smart Mobility Network demonstrations. Let's go inside. This demonstration is the industry's first 10 gigabit Ethernet automotive solution. We have jointly developed this with Molex. An expanded version of this network can be seen at the Molex meeting room in the South Hall at CES. I'd like to walk you through the platform that we have here, and then we'll see it in operation, and we'll take a look at the diagnostic data that we can draw from the many devices in the network, and we'll do over-the-air updates to some of those devices. Let's take a look. The heart of this network is two Molex gateway switches. These automotive gateways provide a 10 gigabit Ethernet backbone and aggregate the data from a variety of ports on each of the gateway switches. We have gigabit Ethernet from the gateway switch to the head unit. We have 100 megabit Ethernet from the gateway switches to three cameras from the front switch, the left side mirror camera, the front camera, and the right side mirror camera. And we have 100 megabit Ethernet to the rear camera from the rear gateway switch. This 100 megabit Ethernet links to the cameras is a 100 base T1 link. This is power over data line with an unshielded twisted pair. An excellent economic automotive solution. We also have 100 megabit Ethernet running to our seatback displays and to a digital audio amplifier. We have HD and UHD seatback displays, and we will be showing synchronized video and audio running over Ethernet AVB from the head unit and a media module on the head unit to the seatback displays and speakers. We also have CAN buses with automotive ECU platforms. We have a CAN bus from the front gateway switch, which has two ECUs on it. One ECU operating in an RTOS, the other ECU operating AutoSAR operating system. Then on the rear gateway switch, we have another CAN bus to another ECU. And we have a media module, which allows us to connect an iPhone or an Android phone and access our media content from the head unit in the car. Let me demonstrate some of the functionality of this network for you. First, let's take a look from the front camera. You may notice that we have a fisheye condition in the visual presentation from this camera. So we may want to download some new software to the camera to do optical processing in the camera to reduce the fisheye. Here we see the view from the backup camera. The camera on the back of the car has a parking uh, assist overlay. You'll also note that the text uh, in front of the camera is shown in mirror image mode, which is, of course, correct for a camera looking out the back of the car. And we have a parking assist overlay here in green. Perhaps this was an unfortunate choice of color, as it may give the driver false confidence of uh, the, clear, uh, the clearance behind the vehicle. So perhaps in our update, we will want to change the parking assist overlay as well. I'm going to plug in some media content to my media module from a USB stick so that we might enjoy some entertainment in the car. I'll be putting in some video with some flamenco tempo music so that we might observe the synchronization between the audio and the visual uh, content. This is going to run over gigabit ethernet from the head unit to the front switch then over 10 gigabit from the front switch to the rear switch, and then over 100 megabit ethernet to the HD displays and 100 megabit ethernet to the digital audio amplifier. And we'll be able to keep all of that synchronized through the ethernet AVB protocols. Now let's take a look at the eSync over the air update and diagnostic platform and its ability to reach the devices in this car. I'm going to look here at the diagnostics first. I'm going to call up the infotainment domain in the car, and let's take a look at the media module. I can observe on the media module not only the operating voltage and temperature on this module in real time, 
I can also observe an accumulation of usage patterns and see how many times, how frequently, in any period of time I might choose, the USB-A and USB-C ports uh, of the media module have been used. So not only am I pulling out diagnostic information that I might use to uh, assist in maintaining the reliability of my product features in the car, I'm also gathering real-world data on the usage patterns. Uh, how are consumers using the media module in the car? And that can help with future product planning as well. I can also look at the cameras. I have four different cameras and I can track temperature sensors within the camera enclosures as well as the resolution and frame rate that the cameras are producing. In this case, the cameras are producing 1280 resolution and 30 frames per second. Now let's do some over-the-air updates. I'm going to use the eSync platform to do an OTA update package that will update both the media module and two of the cameras in this car. I'll update the front camera to remove the fisheye effect that will be loading a visual processing, an image processing algorithm set into the camera itself. This being an Ethernet based camera does compression and image processing in the camera before sending it out over the Ethernet. We'll also do an update to the rear camera to change the parking assist overlay. So let's do that update now. I use the eSync application manager from the server in the cloud to identify the vehicles that I want to send my update to. I complete my vehicle list, my vehicle filtration, I set my policies, and I am now ready to deploy the campaign. We have deployed the campaign, and the server will report back to us the status of the campaign. Let's take a quick look at the head unit in the car. We can see that the software is beginning to come down to the car. First, we see the software for the Polaris, which is the media module, as well as the head unit, to add some features and functionality there. Here we see also the camera software packages coming down. As that software is completed on coming into the car, we see now that the software is being installed in those devices. Ah, the first of the devices has been finished. Let's take a quick look at the eSync uh, application at the server, and we can see that we have one of two packages pending and one of two packages complete. Ah, now both packages have been complete. There are no remaining pending packages, and we know that the update to the car has been completed as well. Let's go back and take a look at the camera functions. I'm going to bring up the front camera first. Now we can see that the fisheye lens effect has been greatly reduced. Let's take a look at the back camera. Now we can see that the parking assist overlay has been changed from green to a more cautionary color tone. This concludes XL4's presentation of the Molex demonstration at CES 2018. If you have further interest, we invite you to come and visit us at www.xl4.com. These are eSync compliant products. If you'd like more information on eSync compliance and the eSync Alliance, we invite you to visit www.esyncalliance.org.